We just got to keep on dreaming. We don't need to put aside that feeling. No, we just can't deny life has been kind of crazy. But now it's time to get up, get up, get up now. Tell me, oh yeah, everything you're thinking, I'll listen. Whatever you're afraid of. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wellness in the Word. I'm so excited to be with each of you this Wednesday night. Uh, so want to say good evening to a few people that I see are already online with us. So good evening, Sister Mary Simon. Good evening, um, LeBlanc. So good to see you or see your icon. Good evening, Sister Carolyn Baldwin. Uh, good evening, Pastor CJ. Good evening, Lakeisha. Good to see everyone that is on the line. I'm glad that everyone is coming in. Um, this is truly the day that the Lord has made, and I'm so excited to bring to you another installment of Wellness in the Word. And so, family, um, as we were talking on Sunday about what are you lifting, um, some of the things that you may be lifting, you may have been thinking about that all week. And so I am so excited to bring to you something I want us to talk about, think about. Um, and so I'm going to ask all of us a question tonight in a moment. So as we prepare to go to God in prayer, I want us to drown out all of the distractions around us. Uh, whatever's going on in the kitchen or in the home, I want us to really focus in on this moment. I want us to be mindful in this moment um, as we prepare to go to God in prayer. So gracious God, our Father, we're so grateful. We're so thankful, Father, for an opportunity to come together to take this time, Father, to hear what it is that you have to say to each of us quiet our hearts, quiet our minds, God, quiet our spirit so that we can hear from you. We need a word from you this evening, God. And so we thank you for this opportunity to come together to look at your word and to understand what it is that you desire for each and every one of us. So God, allow this to be an amazing experience for us. God, allow us to get from this moment what we need to go throughout the remainder of our week. We thank you and we praise you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, family. It looks like we uh, have a few more people who've come online. So good um, good evening, Sister Mary uh, Tizino. Happy to see you. Sister Leona, 
White is happy to see you online. Sister Kathy Johnson, hello. Sister Linda Price, hello. So happy that you were able to join us. Sister Cynthia Montgomery, so happy uh, to see you um, online this evening as well. So family, just keep on coming in. This is a great time to invite others to share in this wellness uh, Wednesday with us. So family, tonight we are talking about being mindful and we're actually going to look at it from a different perspective. We're going to look at, is your mind full or are you being mindful? So family, um, I don't know if you know the answer to that question yet, and you're probably like, well, what's the difference? I'm so glad you're asking that question this evening. So I want to show you a graphic for a moment. It's coming up on the screen now, and it's actually a picture. And I want you to take a really good look at this picture, and I want you to pay attention to what you're seeing. So on one side, we have an individual with a bubble over its head, and you can see that they have a lot of things that they're thinking about that they're that's going through their mind. And then, and that's on the left side. And then on the right side, you see someone who is taking in what is happening around them. They're taking in the beauty of nature. They're, they're, paying attention to the sun, they're paying attention to the trees. And so one person is being mindful, the other person's mind is full. And so I want to pose the question, I want to ask each of us this evening, how are we going through our lives, family? Are we going through our lives with our mind full or are we going through our lives mindful? So I'm going to give you a minute. I want us to be honest. I want us to kind of identify ourselves. You know, you may say, well, Tiffany, it depends on the day. It depends on what moment we're talking about. Sometimes I'm mindful. Other times my mind is full. So talk back to me, family. I want to hear um, where you are. So I'm seeing uh, LeBlanc, you're saying some days my mind is full. Absolutely. I think that's many of us. Many of us go through our lives. Our mind is full. We're thinking about, we're worried about, we're stressing about all the things that are going on in our lives, all the challenges, all of the conversations that we're having with people, we are constantly thinking about things. So yeah, so sometimes our minds won't shut off, right? Even as you could see in nature, right? They're in a beautiful place. There's There were lots of trees, there was the sun, and even in a space where we should be able to look and just focus in on what we're experiencing, a lot of times our minds are so full that we can't even take in what is happening in the present moment that we're in. So how does that impact our relationships with our family? How does that impact us at work? How does that impact us when we're having Having conversations with people. If our minds are full, we don't even have the capacity to really hear what they're saying. We don't have the capacity, even when we're off work sometimes, to turn our brains off. Sometimes we're still thinking about what we have to do tomorrow. So even though we're cooking, even though we're spending time with our families, we're still thinking about work or we're still thinking about that phone call that we received. We're still thinking about that conversation with the doctor. So a lot of times, family, we are going through our lives and we're not even present in the moments that we're in because we're so focused on whatever it is that's worrying us, that's troubling us, that's frustrating us. And so our minds are full and we're not able to be mindful. I don't know about you, family, but I would love to be the person that can always see the, the forest, the trees, the sun in the moments that I'm in so that I'm not losing out on or not appreciating the, the times that I'm having with friends and family, even experiences that I'm having. We can take trips, we can travel, we can go to the most amazing places, family, but if our minds are full, it doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We're not experiencing life in the way that we're really designed to experience them. 
So I, I see I see some um, comments. Some days, Sister Kathy says, some days my mind is full, then other days I'm mindful. Sure, Sister Kathy, I think we all struggle with that, right? I can't sit here and say that I'm always mindful. I think, you know, it depends on the day. It depends on the circumstance. It depends on what's happening. We kind of go back and forth, right, between these two worlds. We kind of find ourselves sometimes having peace, having what what we need, you know, being able to be focused. And then other times we have anxiety. We can't think straight. We can't focus on anything. And so family, that's why we're talking about this tonight, because I think it's a topic and a discussion that we need to have. And so um, with that being said, I want us to look at um, kind of a definition for being having a mind that is full, right? So when we have a mind that is full, we are consumed by our thoughts, by memories, and oftentimes worries about the future. So that's typically what's happening when our mind is full. And so family, when we have a full mind, when our mind is full, let's talk about what happens. We have more stress. Sometimes it can bring about certain illnesses We and things that we're thinking about in our minds, right? We're thinking about stress. We're thinking about what we're dealing with in our health. Sometimes we're thinking about work. We're thinking about our families, relationships. We're thinking about finances, right? So those are some of the things that we fill our minds with, right? And we take that with us throughout the day. We take that with us to lunch on our breaks. We take it with us everywhere that we go because our minds are full. So family, something else that I want us to recognize is that when our minds are full, here's some things that you will deal with. So that stress that you're talking about, um, thinking about, guess what? It can also cause you physical stress. It can cause you anxiety. It can cause you to constantly worry when your mind is full. You feel distracted. You can't even focus, can't even pay attention to what what is going on in the moment that you're in. You feel like, you know, um, your mind goes blank. You're trying to remember something. You just had a conversation with a coworker. And before you can even get back to your desk, you can't even remember what it is that you just told that coworker that you were going to do because your mind is so full. So family, um, you may also experience some difficulty with sleeping. You may have difficulty staying asleep sleep. You may have difficulty getting to sleep as a result of having a mind that is full. And I know you're saying, Tiffany, how is that possible? How can I have a difficulty sleeping with a full mind or I'm sleeping more with a full mind? Well, I'm glad you asked because here's what happens. Some of us have difficulty falling asleep because our minds won't turn off our minds will not stop going. And so you get ready to go to bed at night. You're thinking, oh, I finished my day. And then your mind turns on and you start thinking about all the things that you have to do the next day. Well, for some of us, when our minds are so full, what ends up happening is that we, we end up utilizing more endorphins than we need. Like it actually it actually causes us to become tired. Have any of you guys had a very, very stressful day? A lot of things were happening. You had to make a lot of choices, decisions. And then all of a sudden you were like, I am so tired. I can barely keep my eyes open. I can barely get through the rest of this day. It's because when our bodies are in that fight or flight mode, when we're in that flight mode, we're actually using more energy family. So that means that it tires us out. It drains our batteries. So many of us, we all have a cell phone. We all use our cell phone. And so what if you thought about your mind, just how you think about having a tab or a window open on your computer or your phone? Oftentimes, if your phone starts to lag, if your phone battery isn't charged as long as it used to be. Sometimes you may call, I've, I've called Apple and I'm, I've told them my phone is not functioning in the way that it typically does. And the first thing they tell me to do family nine times out of 10 is to check to see how many windows I have open. 
And boy, oh boy, when I tell you the last time I checked and I actually did this earlier today, I had, you only have, can have up to 500 tabs open on an iPhone. I have 497 tabs open right now. I know it's embarrassing and I don't even know why they're all open. It just means that I don't always close them out. But imagine 497 tabs on my phone. So imagine that in your mind. Imagine everything you're worried about, everything you're stressing about, everything that you're concerned about. That's a tab in your mind. So imagine how many open tabs you have at any given time. And those tabs are draining your battery. They're draining your emotional battery, your physical battery. So does that change things for us, family? Realizing that the more things I worry about, the more things I'm stressed about, the more that it impacts my ability to even show up in the world in the way that I'm supposed to. It prevents me from getting through just one day yeah, I'm, I'm hearing people that are connecting with that. Some people are feeling like, yes, I have a lot of tabs open right now. I have a lot of stress. I have a lot of worries. I have a lot of things that are filling up my mind and it's causing me to feel tired. It's causing me to be distracted. It's causing me to be stressed, to be down, depressed, sad. Yes, because that's what happens, family. Sometimes when our mind is too full, we start to feel overwhelmed. Yeah. And so that's what we don't want to have. And we don't want to feel overwhelmed. We don't want to feel as if there is no end in sight for what we're dealing with, feeling as if there's no hope for us, no hope for our situation. Yeah. And so I'm I'm hearing people saying that sounds like me. I I'm, I'm I'm reading the comments and so many of you are understanding what a full mind looks like now. Understanding how a full mind impacts our emotional and our physical well-being. And family, none of us can afford to not be mindful because having a full mind causes us to not even be able to accomplish the things we desire to accomplish in this in this world not able to accomplish the things that god wants us to accomplish in this world so i think we're 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 moving in the right direction i think everyone is now kind of understanding the difference between having a mind that is full but now we need to talk about having in a moment, we'll talk about what having a mindful um, experience really does look like for each of us. So family, some other things that are impacted when our minds are full, we have less fulfilling relationships oftentimes. Sometimes we start to forget things, things that we oftentimes were on top of everything. And now we're forgetting appointments. We're forgetting events. We're having difficulty completing simple tasks. And we find ourselves being less productive, not getting as much done, looking and saying, man, I used to put all my laundry away as soon as it came out of the dryer. I used to fold it or I used to hang it up. I used to put it away. But sometimes when our mind is so full, we're just going through the motions. We're just doing and checking off things on our to-do list. But sometimes we don't even have the, the extra energy that's necessary to complete something. We start it, but we oftentimes struggle to complete it. So I don't know about you. Yes, uh, Sister Tony, bad memory due to being distracted. Absolutely. Yes. Because sometimes we're just not in, we're not thinking, we're just kind of on autopilot. We're just going through and we're not really present in the moments that we're experiencing. We're having conversations. We're not recalling those conversations. We're listening and everyone remembers Charlie Brown with the teacher that would say, womp, 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 womp. And it was like none of us knew what it was and then Charlie would interpret it. Yeah, that can happen sometimes, family. You're talking to someone, they're talking and, and you don't even, you're not even registering what they're saying. They're just talking and you're nodding and, and you're, but your mind is somewhere else. That's what happens to many of us when our minds are full. And I'm seeing people that are resonating with this saying, yes, I've, 
I've, you know, I've been tired, more tired lately. I was wondering what that was about. I can't shut my mind off. So, so yes, that is, this is all a result of having a mind that is so full that there is really no space for anything. Even the things we desire, we're not able to do when our minds are too full and we're too stressed and we're too worried and we're too anxious and concerned about certain things, thinking about something too intently. It can happen with a project. You can have a work project that's going on and you're so consumed by that project that you you can't even see anything else. You're missing out on events and things that are going on with your family because your mind is full of that project. So it doesn't always have to be seemingly a negative thing, right? That has our attention, that is keeping our mind from being, from keeping us from being mindful. It can be something that is positive, that can also consume our thoughts. Many of us mindlessly scroll on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and you look up and oh my goodness, how much time has gone by? How many videos have you watched on social media, on Facebook, TikTok, or wherever? Time just kind of goes by. But guess what? When our minds are full, that is a welcome distraction. So we enjoy sometimes when we're able to have those moments, have those distractions, because it helps us to not think about all the things that are going through our mind. But the reality is, for many of us, it 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 brings down our productivity because if you spend two hours on social media, that's two hours that something else could have been, you could have been doing something else during that time, right? Because a lot of times the videos we're watching and what we're just laughing at whatever it is, oh, look at that cute cat or whatever, but it's a distraction family and it keeps us right? From having to think about those things. But we have other ways, more productive and positive ways that we can deal with and manage what's going on in our minds. So family, um, I want to kind of continue on. So I want to talk about what mindfulness, what a mindful mind looks like and what it is defined as. So mindful is defined as the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. It is the mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, one's thoughts, and one's bodily sensations. So mindfulness, family, it really is being aware of what's going on with us, being aware of what we're feeling, what we're thinking, and what we're physically experiencing in, in a moment. Many of us are not paying attention. We're not aware. And so oftentimes when we go through life without an awareness, things happen and we're like, well, why am I upset? And we've forgotten about that phone call. We've forgotten about the conversation we had with our boss. But what happens is that we forget about what caused it, but then it starts to manifest itself in our attitude. We might be more irritable. We might not, you know, have the same disposition that we typically have. And so because of that, family, we have to be more aware, more cognizant of how we're dealing with and moving through experiences. So, um, so family, here's something else that I wanted us to focus on. So mindfulness also talks about, you know, um, the importance of setting your intentions, choosing to cultivate an awareness, being intentional with your thoughts, being intentional with, if I'm talking to you, I'm gonna put down my phone, I'm gonna put down the papers that I was looking at, the book I was reading, I'm gonna give you my undivided attention. That's how we become more mindful. That's how we experience something different. Because if I'm not paying attention, if I have my phone, if I'm looking at papers, if I'm doing something else, I'm already distracted. But if I give you my undivided attention, I, I sit, I look at you, now I can hear you, right? 
And even if my mind starts to wonder or tries to wander off, I'm going to try to bring my thoughts back to the present moment. I'm going to engage in the conversation. You know, sometimes we have conversations and we find ourselves, mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't know if the person is really listening or not. They're not giving, they're giving us signs that they're on the line, right? But oftentimes if they're not giving or providing feedback, we don't know if they're understanding what we're saying or even if they're really listening, right? I've been on the phone sometimes and someone will ask me, well, what are you doing right now? And I'll say, what? You seem distracted. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was sending a text message, right? I was reading an email, right? So sometimes people can tell when they don't have our full undivided attention. And how many of us want to have a conversation with someone who's distracted? How many of us want to have a conversation with someone who's not really listening? And so family, you know, this is a great time for me to even interject and say, how many of us pray to God and we, we tell God everything we need, tell God everything we want. And before God can even provide a response or tell us what to do, we've gotten up from the prayer, we've moved on with life, right? So we even have to be mindful family in our prayer life. In our time with God, we have to be mindful because if we're just doing all the talking and we're never listening, how can we hear from God? How can we receive what we need from God so that we know which way to go so that we can get the answers to the prayers that we've been praying? If we just keep praying, family, and we're never stopping long enough to hear from God, at what point? point is God able to then say, okay, Tiffany, okay, DeCarlis, okay, you know, Edna, this is what I want you to do. If we're not really paying attention, if we're not mindful, if we're just moving through the motions and we're so distracted, we're always on social media, we're always doing something, then when can God really truly speak to us? Right. And so many of us um, have said, you know, you're sleeping and then all of a sudden you wake up at three, four in the morning and they say some people will say, you know what, when God wakes me up at that time, I think it's because he's trying to talk to me. And, you know, I, I believe that that could very well be the case. But family, I don't really want to have to wake up at three in the morning because I've been so distracted my entire day that the only time that God has to talk to me is in the wee hours of the morning, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't want him to have to wake me up to talk to me because I've not connected with him all day. I've just been talking, right? But then I get off the phone. I, I, I've been talking all day. I've been praying. I've been talking to God, but I haven't set aside any time to hear from God, right? And so if God wakes me up at three in the morning to tell me something, I'm okay with it. But I don't want that to be the only time that we're in communication where he can talk to me, right? Um, in the middle of the night, waking me up out of my sleep because any other time I'm doing all the talking and I refuse to make space for listening. I'm not mindful enough, right? So, so yeah, so I know we have those moments, but family, I want God to talk to me all throughout the day. I want to be led by him. I want him to tell me which way to go. Don't go that way. That way is not the right way to go today. There's too much traffic. There's going to be a bad accident. I want us to have that type of conversation throughout the day so that he can lead and guide and direct me because wherever he leads, that's where I want to follow. But family, so many times, if our minds are full, we're unable to hear from God. We're unable to experience God. So family, um, living in the present moment, being more aware and awake to each moment that's what mindfulness really is. It's living in the present moment. It's, it means not worrying about the next moment, not worrying about what you have to do after Bible study, but being present in this moment that we're in right now. You made the conscious decision to go to Facebook, go to YouTube and log in. And so because you're here, we, we, because you decided to come into this space, 
We want to make sure that we're present, that we're drowning out all distractions so that we can hear whatever it is that God has for each and every one of us to glean from this time together today. So I know it's hard sometimes, Sister Anne, I get that. I understand that. It is. It's very hard sometimes to drown out the distractions, to stay in the present moment, to not worry about tomorrow, to not worry about what's going to happen after this moment. But this moment that we're in, Today, this moment, this is what we need to focus on. Why? Because there's something for us in this moment. There's something for us to, to, to gain, some knowledge, some understanding for us to gain out of this, the opportunity that we have to be together in this space today. And then we can worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. And I know that's easier said than done. Trust me, I, I get it. I know, I, I know it sounds good. Being present sounds good. But when I tell you family, that when we're able to truly be present, you have some of the most amazing exchanges with people. God can show you things. God can allow you to hear things that you wouldn't have heard otherwise. So many times when I'm really actively listening, I hear things and I say things back to people and they're like, oh, you caught that? I sure did because I was present. People know when we're not present. People know when we're not in the moment with them. Children know. As parents, they know when we're not focused. They know when our phones have our attention and they don't have our attention. Did you know, family, that most children, if they were only able to get 10 to 15 minutes a day of your attention, it would make such a difference in their lives. But most times, they don't get 10 to 15 minutes uninterrupted from us. We're in the car, we're driving, they're in the back seat not in that's interrupted time. We're cooking dinner. They're in the kitchen interrupted, but intentional time, 10 to 15 minutes is all it takes for them to feel loved, valued, heard. And for many of us, we feel the same way. Sometimes we're like, if we could just get you to put that phone down and have a conversation. If we could just hear what you have to say and you hear what I have to say, it would make a world of difference in, for many of us, right? So that's what God is saying. I want that intentional time with you. I want you to be mindful in this relationship with me because that's how you're going to get through those stressful times, family. That's how I get through those stressful times in my life as well, by being intentional with spending time with God. We spend time with other people. We talk to them. And guess what, family? Sometimes all they have to, to give us is a man. That's oh, man, I, I hate that you're dealing with that. Oh, that's oh, that's a that's tough. Right. Sometimes they. Most times they don't have the answers that we need, but we serve a God who does. And so family, being mindful, not having a mind that's full allows us the opportunity to really focus in on what really matters. And so family, don't worry. In a moment, I am going to provide us with some scriptures that will support us through this. So don't you worry. I know many of you are like, well, Tiffany, how do we make this transition? How do we move from having a mind that is full to being more mindful? I'm glad you asked that question. And trust me, the answer is truly on the way. And so family, I want us to start with uh, one scripture in particular. We're going to start with Philippians 2. Um, Philippians chapter two, verse five, where it says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And so family, what does having the mind of Christ really look like for us? What was Christ? When we think about what Christ who he was and what he was doing while he was here on earth. We know that Christ, Jesus Christ was selfless. He was servant centered. He was humble and he was obedient. And so selfless, that means I, I, I'm not concerned about myself. I'm concerned about 
the needs of others. He was servant centered. He was someone who was serving others from the time he started his ministry all the way to the cross. And so what does that do, family, when we talk about being servant centered, being mindful of being of service to others, when we're serving other people, what's the one thing we can't do? What's the one thing that is oftentimes really difficult to do? It's really difficult when we're serving others to think about ourselves in the same way. It helps us to look at things from a very different perspective. It puts things in its proper perspective. And so to have the mind of Christ is to have a mind of service. So family, who are we serving outside of ourselves? Who are we actually serving? Do we serve in our church? What are we doing? Are we just going and sitting and listening to what is happening and listening to the prayers and taking in the, the, the scriptures and the songs, but we're not doing anything outside of that. Who are we serving in our communities? Who are we serving in our neighborhoods? Or are we simply looking always to be served? To have a heart and a mind of Christ, we have to consider looking at how we're living our lives in a very different way. So family, many people are saying, yes, I, I hear you. Um, you know, it's difficult to be selfish when you're serving others. Absolutely, Sister Cheryl. And this is the other thing. When you're serving others, oftentimes you will hear stories. You will encounter individuals that will help you shift your own perspective, family. You'll look and say, whoa, wait a second. Here I was worried about that situation and this person is dealing with this, right? It shifts our perspective, but it puts things back into a space and place where we see things differently and we see God differently because we can see God if we look in almost anything that we deal with. And so oftentimes when we're talking to people and when we hear their stories, we realize that what they're going through puts what we're going through in perspective. And it reminds us that sometimes in our lives, we're going to go through some hard, challenging times, but other people are also going through hard and challenging times. And if they can go through it and get through it, so can I, right? Yeah. Uh, Brother Jonathan, I hear it's time to get back in formation. Yes. We have to have the right attitude and the right posture, right? So there's a level of humility that we need. We need to be able to look at things and see things and put them back in their proper perspective. And so sometimes when we're serving, we're able to be reminded that, wow, there, there's a lot going on. And, and what I thought seemed, seemed so big in my world, right? In my world. But then when I look at it from a different perspective, it seems so insignificant. It's one of the amazing things I like about flying. I love to get a window seat. And every time I get on a plane and the plane takes off, I'm like a little kid. I want to look out the window. And it's so amazing to me how a city as large as Houston, once we get to a certain altitude family, Houston looks so much different, right? It looks so much smaller. And that's what happens when we focus our attention on God, when we really do the work God is calling us to do, our problems start to look a whole lot different from a different altitude. And all of a sudden, that thing that looks so big, all of a sudden is so much smaller because we're looking at it from a different perspective. We're looking at it from the perspective of us being in God, in relationship with God. So family, uh, talk to me. What, what are you taking from what we've talked about so far? Let me, let me hear from you. I, I know Brother Jonathan, he kind of shared um, what he was saying. You know, we need to get back in formation. Um, you know, what are you, what are you gleaning from this? What are you picking up from this message tonight about mindfulness and what, what it means to be mindful, not having a mind that is full, um, let me talk to me, family. Let me hear from you. Let me hear what you're 
processing, as we say in therapy, what are you thinking? What are you hearing? And what's what's really um, resonating with you? So family, I know, you know, as you're putting some things in the in the chat, some of the other things was humility, right? And then being obedient. Um, Sister LeBlanc, I hear I need to learn to let go and be more present. Sure. Yeah, because we miss out on moments, on opportunities to experience someone. We never know when we'll see someone again. We never know you know, how long it'll be before we'll have another encounter with them. So every single time you have an opportunity to encounter someone, yeah, make it, make it worthwhile. Enjoy that moment, really lean into having that conversation. You know, many of us will ask the question, how are you doing? But many of us don't stick around long enough to hear the answer, right? Uh, But what if you did? What what might you get from that experience if you really listen to hear how someone was truly doing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sister DeCarlis, I have to get my mind in tune with God. Yeah, we all do, you know, because we can we can get distracted by the noise of the world. You know, we can get distracted by everything that's going on in our lives and in the lives of the people that we care about and that we love. Yeah. Um, so brother Jonathan, I'm hearing you say, um, our mindfulness is our light. It's what sets us apart. Perception is reality and we have the power to shift it. Yes, absolutely. We need to shift our perspective. We have to not go through things as other individuals go through them. We should, it should look different, right? Um, sister Kathy, we need to get the right attitude and be more humble. Absolutely. We all could you know, we all could take a a good piece of humble pie at times, right? Because sometimes we can, we can get too proud of ourselves. We can think, you know, too highly of ourselves if we're not careful. And we need to be able to talk and live with a level of humility, knowing that, you know, like I said on Sunday, you know, with Job, it's like, you know, God gives and God takes away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Like, who am I that, that God has to, you know, only shower down good on me? Who am I to say that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, but, but God is still the same. Yeah. Yeah. Sister Edna, stop and listen to God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, LeBlanc saying, I, I I talk to God, but I never take the time to really listen. Yeah, that's what we have to do because that's how we get our direction, right? That's how we know what to do, what decisions we need to make. Family, when it comes down even to what I wear, what color I wear, God and I have a conversation about everything. There is nothing, I'm, I mean, there is nothing that we don't discuss. I'm like, what color should I wear today? And, and believe it or not, a lot of times it works out in such a way, especially on Sundays, family, where I don't know what um, the praise team is wearing, but God will put a color in my spirit. And I'm like, you know, I wanna wear this color. And it never fails. Sister Tony can attest to it because I'll walk in and I'll just start laughing and say, y'all didn't tell me what y'all were wearing today, but God did. That is how, and, and I think that God does that to me, family, because he wants me to see that as a deposit in that account of trust, right? Because it's like, if you can trust me to tell you what to wear and you're in line with the praise team and you didn't even know what they were wearing, surely you can trust me with these other things that you're really worried and concerned about, right? Yeah, that that's what that's how good God is to us. He says, test me in this, try me, like, and see if I won't, right, open up a window of heaven. So God is like, put me to the test, just trust me. You you tried everybody else, you listened to everyone else, you called 15 people to get their opinion. How about you ask me what you should do, right? So, but that takes a level of mindfulness. And so family, um, let let me keep going. <laughs> because I haven't even gotten to like the good scriptures um, that I have for us. I just got to the first scripture, but family, I really wanted us with the time we have left. Let's look at Luke 8, 
starting at verse 40, going through verse 47. Now, when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. And Jesus was on his way. The crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years but no one could hear, heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. I know that the power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet in the presence of all the people. And she told him that it was her. So family, I have some questions for you from the scripture. So we're going to play a little game. I want you to tell me if this person was being mindful or they had a mind that was full. So in this scripture, there were four people I wanted us to identify. So there are four people that I want us to kind of walk through this exercise. So, so Jay Iris, do you think Jay Iris was being mindful or was his mind full? Daughter is sick and dying. Lots going on with her. Do you think he had a mind that was full or do you think he was mindful? Let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see if you guys are able to, yes, he had a mind that was full. Everybody's saying it, yes, his mind was full. He was stressed, he was worried, right? Yes, everybody is saying it, uh, full for sure, absolutely. So then we have Jesus. Was was Jesus, was his mind full or was he being mindful? So now we're talking about Jesus. Because Jesus asked the question, who touched me? So if, if Jesus is asking who touched me, there's a crowd of people, but he knew that someone had touched him. So he had a, he was being mindful. He was aware of everything that was going on with him mentally, physically, and emotionally, right? He said, I felt it. I felt it in my body. He was absolutely being mindful. Yes, family. Good job. You guys are doing good with this game. Okay. So next we have Peter. So Peter says, all these people around here, you have the nerve to ask who touched you. Look at this crowd. Of course, somebody touched you. So was he being mind mindful or did he have a mind that was full? Because he's talking about the people, how many people are out there, all of that. So was Peter, was he being mindful or did he have a mind that was full? Yes, he had a mind that was full. Absolutely. You, you guys are really on it tonight. You are understanding what we're doing. And so last, the woman with the issue of blood. Was she, did she have a mind that was full or was she being mindful? And I stopped short of giving you, us the rest of the scripture, but many of us know the story, right? So she just, she said, if I could just touch, right? The hem of his garment, I know that I can be made whole. So, so she was, what are we saying? Was she mindful or did she have a mind that was full? Okay, so this one is a little hard, right? Because it depends on what we think, right? Someone in her circumstance or situation should have. Many of you are saying she has a mind that is full because we know her circumstance. But family, she actually was being very mindful. She didn't care about the crowd. She didn't care about those people. She knew if she could just get to Jesus, 
if she could just touch any part of him, that she could get what it is that she needed. So she was focused. She was aware. She was being mindful, right? And so that one, you know, that was a trick question because family, many of us, when we're going through trials, tribulations, when we have health concerns, our minds are full, right? Our minds are full. We're focused on the wrong things, right? But she was focused on Jesus because I would imagine, have, have any of us been in a crowd before? If you're in a crowd and you're trying to get or trying to keep the crowd of people that you're with together, you have to be pretty mindful, right? You got to keep them close. And so I would imagine that she saw Jesus, knew where he was and was like, if I can just get to him. So her, she wasn't distracted by the other people. She more than likely had to keep her eye on him, right? <laughs> yeah, family, she had to keep her eye on Jesus in order to get to Jesus, right? So many of us, in the same situation would have made a different decision, would have would have handled it differently, right? Because we wouldn't have been focused on, G we would have been focused on the crowd. We're focused on what we're dealing with, our circumstance, right? Yeah, so uh, that that's exactly what sets us apart. So it doesn't matter what we're going through. Our circumstances shouldn't determine whether or not we're mindful or have a mind that's full, right? Because that's what many of us were banking on. Oh yeah, her mind is full, but her she was being mindful. If I could just touch, if I can just get to Jesus, if I can just get to the hip, just touch the hem of his garment. I don't even need his arm. I don't even need to just get to any part of him and touch him. I know I'll be healed right? And so for many of us, if we could just focus our attention, focus our mind on Christ, on God, right? It would change how we were dealing with the circumstances and situations surrounding our lives. Yeah, Sister Linda, correct. She kept her mind on Jesus. Yeah. So, so many of us, right? That's what we need to do to get through whatever it is that we're dealing with. Whether it's 12 years, 12 days, 12 months, right? Whatever it is that we're dealing with, we need to, just like the woman with the issue of blood, right? We need to keep our eyes, keep our focus, be mindful of Jesus, be mindful of God. Yeah. Yeah, Sister Mary, Mary Simon, yes. She was focused on getting healed. She was, yes, that was her focus. And so for many of us, we need to be focused on, right? Not our problems, not our challenges, not the trauma, not the drama, not the illness, not the diagnosis, not the finances, not our bank account, right? We need to be focused on God. And we have to believe that God has the power to do the very thing that we need done. Because that's going to make the difference, family. If we believe that God has the power to heal, if we believe that God has the power to turn our situation around, God has the power to fix whatever relationship we're struggling with, whatever family situation we're facing, whatever we're dealing with, if we believe that God has the power, then it's easy to keep our eyes focused on him, right? But it's when we start to doubt it's when we start to challenge that, that we find ourselves in a very different place. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. I, listen, you, you guys uh, are truly encouraging me tonight <laughs> through the, through the comments. So I truly appreciate that because I, I was, God gave this to me and I said, okay, God, is this really what you want me to talk about tonight? Are you sure? We went back and forth. I had like three other topics. But, but God said, this is the one that I want you to talk about. And so thank you guys for encouraging me because I almost wasn't obedient this evening and I was going to do something else because I said, well, this makes more sense. Uh, 
but God makes no mistakes. So thank you for, um, for that encouragement and saying that this is what you guys needed because that's what God told me um, to, to speak about this evening. So yes, Reverend CJ, Pastor CJ, yes, the Lamb of God, God has the power to do all that he said he would do. Absolutely. And so we just have to believe. And if we keep our minds focused on him, he will, he will blow our minds with how he blesses us, blow our minds with how he shows up for us and shows out for us. But we have to believe. And so many of us have had minds that are full. Many of us came on the line tonight with a mind that was full. But guess what, family? You do not have to leave the same way you came. And so you could have came in with a mind that was full, but you can leave here tonight being mindful. You can leave here tonight being mindful of the God who said, hey, I can do anything but fail. What we see as a mountain, God sees as nothing. It's nothing in his eyes. It's nothing that he can't overcome. We can speak to those mountains and ask and tell those mountains that they have to move and they have to move. So what, what is it that we need to get out of our minds tonight? What is it that has our minds full? Tonight, we have an opportunity to, to let that go. Tonight, we have an opportunity to focus our eyes back on God. Family, on Sunday, I talked about Psalms 121. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. That, that Psalms 121 means the world to me, has meant the world to me forever because of what it says. Our help comes from God. So it doesn't matter what we're dealing with. It doesn't matter what we're facing. Our help comes from God and God is an ever present help in the time of storm. He's an ever present help in a time of trouble. He's a healer. He's a provider. He, he makes ways out of no ways. He will make a stream in a desert place. So family, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with tonight. It doesn't matter where you are, where you find yourself tonight. We serve a God that can meet us right where we are. If we invite him in. And many of us have been doing it on our own. We've been trying to do it without God. We, we figured out that we could do it and we figured out a plan for it. But I would invite each and every one of us, including myself, to, it's okay to have a plan. But, but talk to the master planner about it. Talk to God about it. Say, God, this is what I came up with. But what is it that you would have for me? What is it that you would have me to do? And then be okay, you know, using a pencil and not a pen so you can make any changes that you need to make so that God can order your steps and get you to where it is that you desire to be in this life. Yes, our help comes from God. Yes, I'm so grateful that God is our ever-present help. And so family, like I said, I, I won't leave you without some scriptures to back up everything that we talk about. So there are so many scriptures that talk about the mind, talk about our thoughts, because our thoughts and our mind, it's so important, family. So Philippians 4 and 7 says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 26 and three says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. So family, if you're needing peace tonight, if you're tired of being stressed and worried and concerned all the time, Isaiah 26 and three says that he will keep you in perfect peace. But but he also tells us to keep our mind stayed on him. So so family, there there is an answer to the trouble that we're facing. There is an answer to what we're dealing with. And that answer is keep your eyes, keep your focus on God. Keep your focus on God at all times. Doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Doesn't matter what you're facing. Keep your eyes focused on God and God will then give you peace. 
how many of us could use some peace tonight? How many of us could use some good sleep tonight? How many of us don't want to stay up another night worried, stressed, or concerned? I encourage you, as Isaiah 26 and 3 tells us, keep your mind steadfast and trust in God. And he will give you perfect peace. So it's an exchange, family. It's like, trust in me. Give me your worries. Give me your burdens. Give it to me. And in exchange for it, I'll give you peace. That's, that's a good exchange rate. I don't know about many of you, but that's a good, I will give up these troubles, these worries, the things that have been stressing me out. I'll give these family members up. I'll give the kids up. I'll give it all back to God because it all belongs to him anyway. And in exchange for that, God is willing to give me peace. Yeah, we need peace. We need joy. We need, yes. So, so can we make an exchange with God tonight, family? Can we give him our mind that's full? <laughs> and in exchange for that, we will be mindful of God. And then God will give us peace. He'll give us joy. He'll work out the situations and circumstances that concern us. That's what God promises in his word, family. So family, Romans 12 and two says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. So, so even as we go through troubles, the world goes through troubles too, but we shouldn't go through troubles like the world. We shouldn't go through troubles and, and, and be concerned and stressed and worried and, you know, pulling our hair out and all of that. Yeah, we should go through, we should deal with our troubles in a very different way. Why? Because we have a relationship with God. We serve a God who is there for us, who fights for us. So we're not even in this thing alone. We're not fighting this by ourselves. Yes, Sister Tony, I'm making an exchange with God. Yes, give give up the mind that's full for a mindfulness. Yes, thank you. Keeping our mind, Sister Kathy, stayed on God. Yes, yes. Sister Ann, I will trust and focus on God. Yes, yes, that's exactly what we are supposed to do. Be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Yeah. And renewing, when we renew something, that means we have to do it over and over. <laughs> so you can't just do it one time, right? Over and over and over again, because there will, there, there's going to be something that's going to come up where we may have to renew, renew our minds again, right? Renew our resolve, renew our, our persistence, our perseverance. Like, yeah, we have to renew it over and over and over. So it's not a one-time thing. We have to keep doing it as often as we need to, right? Because every day thoughts come into our head. Every day we experience something in life that may cause us to need to renew our mind again, all right? We're going good for a while. And then all of a sudden we hit, we come up against something, we hit a wall and then we have to maybe renew, renew our strength again, right? So that we can continue to do what we need to do. Remind ourselves, that's why these scriptures, family, are important. That's why the scriptures are in the chat for you guys so that you can screenshot it, do whatever you need to do so that you can use these throughout the week. Use them, add them into your daily meditation, your time with God. Even, you know, God has not given me a, a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. My mind should be sound. And sometimes family, our minds are not sound. And so, yes, we have to renew, right, over and over and over again. Yeah, yes, we have to remind ourselves, uh, Brother Jonathan, to be mindful. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Colossians family three and two says, set your minds on things above, 
not on, oh, it should have said earthly things. I was typing fast and I put early things. It should say earthly things. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. What, what makes that so important? Because if we focus our eyes on God, and if we're not worried about what's going on down here, not worried about, because family, sometimes we turn on the TV, we're hearing what's going on around the country, around the nation, you know, and it, it can get to be so heavy for us, right? But if we, we seek God, if we turn our attention to God, and if we stay in that space and we continue to set our minds on God, we, we have a peace, right? We have a, a an assurance that everything's going to be all right. I don't know how, right? I don't know when, but I, I know that everything will be all right. And we'll have the peace that God has given to us. So even when we go through the fire, even when things are not going the way we want them to go, we can still have peace in the midst of whatever we're facing. Yes. Yeah, I understand. We all struggle with this, to, to be mindful, to keep our minds on God, to not get distracted by the world, by what's going on, by what's what we're getting in the mail, what we're seeing on TV. There's a lot going on. You know, student loans are starting up. People are worried about that. The government shut down. We don't have a speaker in the house. There's just so many things. And those aren't even personal things. That's just what's happening that impacts all of us in one way or another. So then you add in your own stuff, right? And so if you start to just start talking about it, goodness gracious, we could all be you know, in a not good place. But if we keep our eyes on God and we say, God, I trust you. I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know who you're going to put in a position of power, but God, I trust you. The, the, the powers that be, God, I trust you. I trust you to put the right people in position. I may not always understand it, but I trust you with it. God, you know what's going on around this world. You know what's going on in my neighborhood. You know what's going on in my home, but God, I trust you. And sometimes that's all we can do. And so my last scripture for this evening is Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So Philippians 4 and 8 family is telling us whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy. Family, I don't know about you. I could think of, an, of several things that are praiseworthy even in this moment. We're here, clothed in our right minds. We made it to see another day. We have everything that we need. We may not have, have everything that we want, but we have everything that we need. And we could go on and on. So if we just focused on that, right? It says, focus on what's pure, whatever is lovely. It's saying, just focus on good stuff. Focus on good. Change the way you think about stuff. There is good in everything. There's good in any situation. You just have to look for it. And sometimes you don't even have to look that hard. You just have to use a different lens. And so if we use the God lens, there is something good in every. God, I thank you for waking us up this morning. I thank you for starting us on our way. God, I thank you for multimedia. I thank you for social media. I thank you that I have a phone that I was able to log into Facebook, log on to YouTube. I was able to experience what is happening here tonight. I was able to connect with sisters and brothers who believe the same thing that I believe. Yeah. And we could go on and on, right? There's something that we can find to say thank you about, something that we can thank God for doing for us today, just today. Just today, we don't even have to go back very far. There's something that's praiseworthy that has happened to you today. You made it home safely. You still have your job. 
There's food in the refrigerator. There's water that you can drink, like clean water, right? And many of us drink bottled water. Like there, there's something that we can, yeah, thank God for just today. So if we do that every day, it changes and shifts our perspective. So then, like I was talking about earlier, everything else seems so much smaller and our God continues to grow in our lives. Because then we'll say things like, oh, my God can do exceedingly abundantly ab above more than I could ever ask, think, or imagine. So this is not too hard for my God. There is nothing my God cannot do. Like that's how we'll start to talk when we shift our perspective. Yeah, that's what will happen when we start to look at things from a different vantage point. There's nothing my God cannot do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yeah, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm a lender and not a borrower. Yeah, when we start to like really get into the word, when we really start to affirm ourselves with the word, it gives us the strength that we need so that when things happen in our lives, when things happen that would potentially cause us to have a mind that's full, we can be mindful of a God who already has worked out the situation and circumstance that we're facing. Yeah, that's right, Sister Lakeisha, my God can do anything. Yes, absolutely. So we need to start speaking, right? We gotta shift our perspective, shift what we're focused on and focus on God. Yeah, there is nothing too hard for my God. There you go, Sister Tony, absolutely. There is nothing my God cannot do. And that's actually a song and it's in my head right now. There is nothing my God cannot do. So no matter what we face, no matter what we're dealing with, no matter what diagnosis, no matter what letter you just got in the mail, no matter what is going on at your job, no matter what is happening in your business, no matter what is happening in your family, no matter what that relationship looks like right now, no matter what is going on in your community, no matter what is happening in the White House, no matter what is happening around this world, there is nothing too hard for God. So God can fix anything. He can do anything but fail. Yeah, there's nothing my God cannot do. Family, it has truly been a pleasure spending some time with you talking about having a mind that's full and being mindful. I have truly enjoyed this time with you with wellness in the word. And if this experience has been a blessing to you, please share it with other individuals. Click that like and share button. Tell them, hey, you missed out. You missed it live, but you can go back and you can listen to this. I think this would bless you. And as always, family, you know, if this uh, wellness in the word, if Wednesdays in the word um, has truly been a blessing to you and you would like to donate, give, now is a good time to do so. Um, there are six ways that you can give here at St. John Northwest Church. Um, and so those will pop up on the screen. Of course, you can do in person. You can go to our website at www.sjnorthwest.org. You can also uh, click secure give, look for St. John Northwest in your app store once you download it and click the donate button. You can always mail in your gift at St. John Northwest Church PO Box 41131, Houston, Texas 77241. You can cash app your gift using dollar sign S-T-J-O-H-N-N-W. And now family, you can sell your gift using finance at sjnorthwest.org. If you're using Zelle, please make sure to put your name uh, as well as your information so that we can have it. But those are the ways that you can give here at the church. And so family, if you have been blessed by this experience, please feel free um, to give a gift. It helps us continue to do the work that God is calling us to do, not just within the church walls, but outside in the community. And so family, with that in mind, we also are so excited about some of our upcoming events. As always, we do have a prayer on 
Friday mornings, corporate prayer, uh, 7 a.m. So if you haven't tuned in uh, in a while, please do so. We are working on getting everyone back in. So we may have to do away with the no passcode very soon. But for now, we're using this number. Please screenshot it, share it with others. We start at seven, we take all prayer requests, and then we try to um, honor your time. But most importantly, it's an amazing time of prayer to give us strength for the journey. And so also family, this Saturday, this Saturday, October 28th, we are so excited to have our family fall festival from 12 to 4 p.m. Please invite friends and family to come out. I hope to see all of you there. Let us know that you're coming. We want to make sure we have enough goodies for everyone. So if you haven't already sent us a text message we sent a text out on Sunday. Like I said, I would family. I wanted to make sure you had ample time to invite your friends and family. Uh, please let us know if you're coming. 281-916-5335. We also uh, sent it out inviting all of you. If you are um, connected to us through the church Facebook page, we sent an invite. So please send that out to friends and family. We want to have a great time. We will have fun for all ages. We're going to have games, bouncy houses. We're going to have music. We're going to have a good time. Sister Renee, I hope, uh, you, I hope you're up for some line dancing. Like, you know, we're going to have cards. We're going to just have a good time family. So please invite friends and family to come. We'll have face painting arts and crafts for kids and adults alike. Whatever you're into, I promise we'll probably have something for you. But most importantly, we want a fellowship and we want to have a good time with each and every one of you. So that's on Saturday. But family, we are a very active church. So on Sunday, we are a couple of things. We are celebrating all of our breast cancer survivors. We're celebrating all of our fighters. So we are asking that everyone wear pink, that we have a pink out on Sunday at church. So if you're coming to St. John Northwest Church on uh, Sunday, please wear your pink, wear, um, you know, guys look good in pink, girls look good in pink. We all rock pink in October. So please come prepare to celebrate um, with our survivors and with our fighters. It is also Senior Sunday. So we are also um, going to have a senior takeover. They're going to do everything from the welcome um, to the prayer, to every aspect of our worship experience. The seniors will be integrated into that. We do that every fifth Sunday. So invite a senior out, invite a family or friend to come on Saturday have them hang out with us all weekend. I know, you know, sometimes when we were growing up, we spent a lot of time at church. We don't do this a whole lot, but this fam, this weekend family, we're going to, we're going to have us a good time. So please come out, hang out with us, invite others to do the same. Um, it's so good to be with each of you. So if there are any prayer requests, uh, specific prayer requests that you have, I will capture those at this time as we prepare to end our time together this evening. So if there are any prayer requests that you have, please start putting those in the chat. And of course, there are some individuals that we are continuing to pray for. Uh, we're good to see you on the line, Sister DeCarlis. We are continuing to pray for you we're praying for Brittany Paul. Uh, we're continuing to pray for um, Sister Cynthia. I saw you online. We're continuing to pray for Brother Charles, um, Sister LeBlanc. Okay, I see you. I'm praying for you. So we're praying for Brother Charles as well. Sister Cynthia, we're praying um, Sister Rita Adams. Okay, I see you online. Praise God for you. Happy to have everyone on the not line. Sister Tony, we're praying for peace, strength, and to remain mindful. Okay. Jotting that down as well. And I am praying for all of the committee members that are responsible for, um, who have been responsible, not just for this upcoming um, family fall fest, but also praying for everyone who has participated in our making our sixth anniversary. 
so very special this year. So thank you to everyone. And we are praying for you. And we're praying that God will continue to strengthen you for, for what's to come, because this is only the beginning family. Um, we want to continue to do things uh, throughout the year. And we want to engage and involve everyone as much as possible. Sister Lakeisha, I see Sister LaCrista. We're putting her on the prayer list as well as Delilah. We have them both. Thank you for that. Sister Cynthia Montgomery. Okay, thank you, family, for your continued prayers for Brother Charles. Absolutely. Sister Lakeisha is also praying for guidance and for herself. Good to see you on the line this evening, Ebony. Hello, greetings from California. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Okay, let's, uh, so I'll get and capture all of the, the remaining prayer requests if I miss any of them as we prepare to close out this evening. So Father God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, to come together, God, and thank you for the record of your word, God. Thank you for what you have done in this space, Father. Thank you for drowning out the distractions, Father, and allowing us to be mindful in this moment, God. And so, God, we're asking that you allow us, Father, to continue to remain mindful, Father. Forgive us, God, of all of our sins, Father. Forgive us for not trusting you enough, God. Forgive us for not releasing things before now, God. But today, Father, we're we're taking away a, a mind that is full, Father, and we're replacing it with mindfulness, God. We desire to have your mind. We want a, the mind of Christ, God. We want to be obedient, God. We want to have humility, Father. We desire, Father, to be servant oriented and centered God. And we desire God to be selfless. So God, allow us opportunities, God, to show up in new ways. Father, allow us to speak to the challenges that we face, the trials and tribulations that we face. God, allow us to speak faith to those situations, God, and circumstances surrounding our lives, God, and allow us to lean and depend on you. Allow us to trust you like never before, God. And God, we're trusting you to take away the pain, take away the burden, take away the trials, the tribulations, God, take away whatever it is that we're dealing with, God. And we're exchanging it even now for your peace, for your joy, for your love, God, for forgiveness, God. We're replacing it, God, with those things that are eternal, God. We want to focus in on you, God, and we will give you the praise. We'll give you the honor and we'll give you the glory, God. We're asking for sweet rest this evening, God. We're laying all of our troubles at your feet, God, and we're leaving them there, God. We're not going to pick them up again, Father, and we're trusting you with the outcome, God. We're trusting you with the circumstances and situations surrounding our lives, God. We're trusting you like never before, and we're thanking you in advance. Thank you for the victory, God. Thank you for turning those situations around, God. Thank you for listening to us, God. But thank you for also speaking to us, God. Thank you for allowing us to have a space, God, where we can hear you, God, and respond, Father. So, God, we're thanking you even now, God, for the ability, God, to be obedient in this season, God. Thank you for the ability, Father, to do what you're telling us to do, God. So lead, guide, and direct us, and we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory, and we'll give you the honor, for it all belongs to you. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ we pray, and the people of God said, amen. Amen, family. It has truly been a pleasure to spend some time with you this Wednesday night for another edition of Wellness in the Word. There will be another edition of Wellness in the Word next month. So I'm already working on that. I believe I know what um, God is is prompting me to speak about, but I'm so excited. And thank you for allowing me to sit in this space with you, hold space for me and allow us to glean from the word of God together. Love you, family. Have a wonderful rest of your night.
just got to keep on dreaming We don't need to put aside that feeling, no We just can't deny Life has been kind of crazy But now it's time to get up, get up, get up now Tell me, oh yeah Everything you're thinking, I'll listen Whatever you're afraid of Let this be your invitation 